Starting from 1992, this mine was mostly used for treatment purposes, and since 2010, for entertainment. The view from here is quite impressive. It is a proper amusement park. Miniature golf. Table tennis. Billiards. Bowling. A Ferris wheel. A little amphitheater. And even a dock for rowboats. And all of this is underground in the depth of the centuries old salt mine. Of course, figures cannot convey the feeling you experience here. However, for your information, this mine is 50 meters deep. The neighboring mine, named after Maria Teresa, with an underground lake, is 100 meters deep. You could easily fit the Big Ben in there, for example. The question arises, why would one build all of this at the bottom of a mine? Let's ask the guide who has been working here for many years. What was the main idea of creating such kind of thing? People are coming here for treatment, and it's good to have things to do, like playing the mini golf or mini bowling, or also ordinary people, the, the two tourists who are just visiting the salt mine. However, these attractions were installed here for vastly different reasons. Business the business model is easily illustrated using souvenirs. Here's the souvenir shop. When the souvenirs were situated upstairs at the entrance, they were not particularly popular. As soon as the shop was relocated underground, they started selling like hotcakes. That means the object is not as important as the atmosphere. It's one thing to just go underground or play miniature golf under normal conditions. It's another thing when everything comes together. Two mechanisms are triggered, an activity to indulge in and the unusual place. Our film crew, which has traveled to many places and seen a lot, could not compare this boat tour to any other of their previous experiences. By the way, how were those mines formed? Believe it or not, it was done in the simplest way possible. A small hole was made in the ground as an entrance to the mine. Then salt was gouged out manually with special tools similar to a pickaxe. On average, the rate of work was half a meter a year underground. So for example, it took 200 years to hollow out the 100 meter Maria Teresa mine. See these marks? They indicate the years when miners reached a certain depth. The deeper it is, the closer the mark is to the present. Do the creators of this thing, do your bosses, they satisfy what they done? Yes, of course, of course they are, they are very satisfied. Because imagine when they made the project, uh, they, they were thinking that uh, the, the average number of the tourists which will, will visit the salt mine in one year, it will be around 150,000 visitors. In the first year after modernization, it was more than 350,000 visitors. So it was twice then than they were thought. So twice. it's a very, very good project. It was a very good project. Two thousand fifty meters above sea level, the famous Saint Gotthard Pass. It is often blocked by snow in the winters, making it extremely hard to reach.
Our goal is the Underground Hotel. It is located in a former military bunker. Concrete floors, walls, ceilings, water dripping from above. All in all, the hotel doesn't seem to be welcoming us with open arms. This is a Swiss military bunker built during the Second World War. There are a few dozen of them constructed on the main pass of the Alps. A reminder of its military past, a staircase and an elevator to transport missiles to the soldiers. Today, these bunkers are partially closed or partially operational, and only this bunker was bought and converted into a fashionable hotel 10 years ago. Another reality awaits us behind this door. We didn't go underground. There are no stairs here, but the bunker is located inside the mountain. So, de facto, there is 250 meters of solid rock above our heads. Previously, this space served as a warehouse and barracks. Similar bunkers were meant to act as independent fortresses protecting the St. Guthard Pass. Today, it's not only those walls that reveal the story of its harsh past. This is the residential area. The hotel has a total of 17 rooms. Let's peek into one of them. What remains of the past? An electrical alley here, an on-off switch, the metal door, of course, a souvenir of its military past, and an air extraction system. The rest was completely redone. These developments are called fashion hotels today. This hotel was indeed designed by the owner, a professional artist and architect. However, six years ago, he went bankrupt and the hotel was bought by a businessman who consistently manages to attract tourists to this place. Tell me please, what was your idea when you bought this hotel? Yeah, it was, the main idea was to buy a USP. That means something which has no competition. I can make my prizes, I can build up an idea and to regenerate the company. And uh, in these five years, I have to make a certain turnover, which gives me enough cash flow to build up the value of the hotel again in the next five years. So that's the main idea. The area of the underground hotel is 14,000 square meters. The surrounding territory is 60,000 square meters. And it is all managed, mind you, by one person. He acts as the development manager, the marketing manager, the electrician, and even the cook. Although in summer, the busiest season, he does get an assistant. Otherwise, he does it all single-handedly. I make everything. I make the marketing, I make the promotion, I make the sales during the winter time for the summer. And in the summertime, I start here. With, I work together with my cook. I have a very good cook here. And we have about 150 or 120 people inside here for uh, maybe a lunch or a dinner. So we rent a couple of people, but we organize it. So who comes to the hotel and why? It depends on the season. In summer, there are small groups of tourists traveling over the pass. They stop for a day or two. In the winter, big companies hold seminars here. Not team building ones, but brainstorming seminars. They stay here for about four days to get inspiration and be creative in complete silence and isolation. In both cases though, the hotel is chosen because of its unique nature. That's the main idea, yeah. Therefore they choose it. They want to 
survive once here, they will have to be here. They tell his, that their friends, we have been here, it was beautiful. So it's something unusual what they can present to their surrounding, their milieu or something like that. What is the design of the underground hotel? It is located in three arched caves, each hosting a separate miniature development. The first one is a dining room and a kitchen. The second one hosts a conference room. The third one contains the hotel rooms. There is a fourth miniature cave through which the electrical cables are run. Water from the glaciers at the top of the mountains flow down through this same hole. It's a combination of the incompatible. Up there is an underground reservoir for storing water. Here's a pipe, there's another one. There really doesn't seem to be an issue when it comes to a steady supply of water. It's all around us. The hotel designers turned a drawback into an advantage. The accumulating water is constantly pumped out and this lighting makes it look like a piece of art. This place, so unusual and full of contrast, is fascinating. Charming spaces, there is also a spa area, and all this packed into harsh granite walls. You might feel a bit uncomfortable due to the confined spaces, yet there's also total silence and a feeling of security. In short, it is totally possible to live underground. It's different, but possible. Notwithstanding its eccentric nature and not particularly democratic prices, this hotel treats its customers quite harshly. Water drips from the ceiling all the time. The temperature in the passageways never exceeds 18 degrees, and there is no mobile connection. But the name of this place speaks for itself, La Claustra, which translates into monastery. The Pride Salt Mine. It hosts over 100,000 visitors a year. There's only one way to the underground facility. Buy a ticket and take the bus. It takes three to five minutes to reach our destination. But it's not easy to guess the distance the bus travels or the depth of its descent. It all started as a research project. In 1960, research was done in this and a number of other salt mines to determine if a stay in a salt mine could be beneficial to one's health. It turned out that it could. And now the salt mine is officially declared an underground clinic by the government. What kind of disease? Uh, the diseases uh, of the pulmonary system, uh, like uh, asthma, bronchitis, uh, different allergical problems. So it's about 70% of the people are heating uh, totally, and uh, another 20% uh, uh, they uh, remain at the same uh, stadium. four hours a day, from five to 10 days. That is the program for the preventative treatment in the mine. What does this treatment include? Believe it or not, you simply have to stay here. That's all. In the air, there are small uh, salt parts, mm -hmm. and uh, it helps in uh, easily breathing, and uh, also increase uh, the immunity system. And if you are moving, you have to use uh, more air, and that's why uh, the benefits is uh, increasing. How do you make someone move more? You can take group classes. They take place twice a day. But it works much better when you allow people to decide for themselves what they want to do. All those attractions, restaurants, 
Vacation spots are meant to perform the same function. They help kill time, increasing the number of hours that people spend here underground. Some people come and just sit here, do nothing. Others prefer to be more active. Those huge and rather intimidating spaces don't have a clinical atmosphere. It feels more like a health resort. Everything is free, gentle, and unobtrusive. Is this the Even the church here is multi-faith, as it states in all the tourist guides. Wooden pews are like those in Catholic churches. The icons are a nod to the Orthodox faith. Symbols of the Lutheran church are located at the entrance. Of course, the main point is not to entertain, but to make you active, to move and breathe. It is most likely the one and only underground adventure park in the world. How could someone resist experiencing this? Okay, I will be going to the yellow zone, the intermediate level. I don't think I would be able to handle the red one. Since its opening in 1980, it has been visited by three and a half million people. Many visitors come in spring and summer, the high allergy seasons. Even though there are no official statistics, it is noted that there are a lot of repeat visitors. Somewhere along the way, closer to the middle of the course, I started experiencing a salty taste in my mouth. I don't know if it's going to affect my health in any way, but this surely helps to pass the time. Of all the things that people have come up with, life beneath the ground seems to be one of the most original and controversial. It's no coincidence that normally these were military installations that were located underground rather than entertainment or vacation spots. That's what makes the combination of the two feel so unusual. You can easily find lots of treatment centers, fashion hotels, and amusement parks on the surface. But underground, they suddenly become unbelievably fascinating, even if you only visit them once.